In this tutorial, you'll learn how to design a page using InDesign CS5. The first thing I like to do before starting any page layout is collect the materials that are going to be on my page. So I've created a projects folder with my last name in the word design. And in it, I have my fonts folder, I have my images folder with all my images that have been toned and cropped and sized for this project, and I have my text folder with my two word documents. One is the main text and one is a sidebar. So let's go ahead and open up InDesign. I'm going to go to my Applications folder, find InDesign, and open it up. This is CS5, and the first screen that you're going to see appear is this kind of welcome screen, and it's asking you, what do you want to do next? Well, we want to create a new document. So I'm going to go ahead and select that document link, and I want to make sure this is print, not web. We're also going to do a spread in a magazine that's two pages right next to each other, so we're going to change this to tabloid. The other thing we want to change is make it landscape instead of portrait mode. We're going to go ahead and change the columns here. So our template will be six columns, but yours will be, depending on your exercise, whatever you want that to be. Our gutters will be one pica. A good rule of thumb is to put one pica. That's 12 points around everything. If you're confused with, you know, how much space should I put underneath this? How much space should I put between this? One pica is kind of a good rule of thumb, especially with the space in between columns. And the margins will leave it three picas, that's a half inch, and that we're good to go. And the first thing we want to do is just save our document. So I'm going to go to File, Save As, and I'm going to give it a name, my last name, and the word design. And now we're ready to begin. And I'll go through the tools and the different panels as I use them in this demo. So the first thing I like to do when I'm designing a magazine layout is put all the folios and page numbers and section names first. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab this type tool which is on the tool panel here and it's in the shape of a T so you might recognize this from Illustrator and notice when I click on any of these tools the properties panel, this options panel up here changes depending on what tool I have selected. So if I have the type tool you're going to start to see uh, typefaces and styles and point sizes, leading, kerning, that sort of thing. If I have the shape tool selected, you're going to see your X and Y coordinates as soon as I start drawing, the width and the height of the shape, the fill and the stroke, etc. So depending on what tool I have selected, this is the selection tool, it will change accordingly. So now I'm going to use the type tool to type in the folio at the top of the page. So I'm going to click on the T tool and I'm just going to click and drag a square up here at the top. I'm going to type the name of my magazine and I'm going to type the date and maybe the page number. So as you can see you probably can't see what I'm typing here so let's use the magnifying glass here on the toolbar to zoom in. Okay the name of my magazine is Eats and I'm actually going to use the type tool to capitalize this. And here's the date, and I want to separate this, so I'm going to use the pipe, which is above the return key, to kind of separate the date. And I'll add a few more spaces on the magazine page number. I'll go in here and bold this, so if you notice on your properties panel up here at the top, you have your character and you have your paragraph and these are the attributes for each. So if I'm in my character mode I can change typeface, the style, and so forth. If I'm in my paragraph mode it means I'm basically changing the alignment, working with the indents, and so forth. So here I want to right align everything so I'm just going to click on this right align and when you hover over these different alignments you can see what they stand for. And I'm going to move my scroll bar over here and I can see here that my folio is right aligned. I'm also going to bold this to make it stand out a little bit more. So to bold it I want to go back to the character attributes and make this bold. I'll bold my three as well. Okay. So we only have this on one side of the page and that's fine. You see that in magazines. But I like to also make sure that the text frame around it is pretty snug. So I'll zoom out and you can do Alt minus, I do Command minus to zoom out. And I'm going to go ahead and do the section name of this as well. So I'm going to zoom in here and you can 
either click to zoom or you can actually drag an imaginary square to zoom. In this upper left hand corner we're going to put the name of the section that this profile that we're designing will appear in. Let me explain. Here's what we're trying to recreate. This is a profile on a chef who owns a pizza parlor and all of the pizzas are from around the world. So the section that this profile appears in has a name and you often see this in magazines. So the name of this section is called Chef Spotlight. It's a regular column or profile piece that appears each month. So we want to create a text box that's on top of a box that's a shade of a color. So that's what we're doing here. So I'm going to go ahead and use my rectangle tool which is down here and if you click on this little arrow you can actually get other shapes as well. We're going to use the rectangle tool and I'm going to click and drag a shape. Now I want to fill this shape and notice how the properties panel changes. Here's my stroke here, it looks like a picture frame, and here's the fill. So if I double click on this fill I can pick any of these colors as my fill. And the stroke I could also pick from ones that are predetermined or I can double click on this and choose one myself. But I'm just going to leave a fill. Now I'm going to create a second box with my type tool and I'm going to type in the word Chef Spotlight. And the one thing I want to do is because I'm using type contrast on this page I'm going to change this to a sans serif font. And the sans serif font that I'm going to use or typeface is Helvetica. Okay, so Helvetica regular. I also want to change this to be white. So I'm going to come over here to my type tool up here, my fill, and I'm going to double click and I'm going to make this white by just putting a zero on the K. Notice how my word disappears. It's not there, but when I move it over, there it is. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust the text frame and also adjust this background color as well. And there you go. So I'm going to zoom out of the page, command minus, and now I have those essential page numbers, section name, name of the magazine, date on my page, and I can move on. In this tutorial, you learned how to create a document in InDesign CS5 and how to use the type tool. In the next tutorial, which is part two of a two-part series, you'll learn how to import photographs, import text, use the ruler tool, as well as several other skills.